Elden Ring is a Soulsborne game created by From Software and more specifically directed by Hitaka Miyazaki, the director of Demon Souls, Dark Souls and Bloodborne. This guy in a way just made his own genre of games and he keeps on making new games in it and they are all quite amazing. Soulsborne games are characterized by highly difficult combat, focused on trial and error progression, complex lore and often quite vague storytelling. And they are absolutely loved by a large group of people, but also tend to have a reputation of being quite unwelcome to newcomers and are often said to be not for bad players, as you just have to get good to be able to play them. As somebody who would most likely be considered a bad player, I genuinely had not thought about playing any of these games. And then I played Elden Ring, which is generally considered the most newcomer-friendly game in the genre. It took me closing in on 80 hours to finish the first playthrough, and I streamed most of it. But was the game worth playing? In Elder Ring you play a Tarnist, a human given life by grace and with it a form of immortality, allowing you to die again and again and again and you will die a lot and each time they will simply be returned to the nearest grace so they can try again. Graces are these little places of light where you can sit down, relax, level up your character sort out your flasks and also have the drawback of respawning all of the enemies in the area <laughs> if, if you end up there. So that's fun. So that definitely gives a certain challenge to using them. Though generally through the game every time I found a grace I was just so grateful. They are usually really well placed so they weren't much a bother but gosh I was so happy to see them most of the time because it knew I didn't have to go through all of the enemies, I had just struggled to get through. And notably, even though I struggled to get through them, I never felt it was necessarily the game's fault that I was dying or failing. It was either I was rushing, I wasn't paying enough attention, or I just wasn't approaching the situation in the right way. And sometimes I was too focused on actually fighting everything on the way instead of just running because that is also an option. Now at the grace you can level up your character, you do this through runes, you get the runes for fighting enemies, so each time something dies it will give you a set amount of runes. You can lose these runes, so if you die somewhere you will drop all of your runes. When that happens you will have one chance to get them back. So you can go over there, you can pick up the runes, and you're going to get all the runes you lost back, except if you die on the way, because if you die again, you will drop the new amount of runes that you have, meaning all of the runes you had are now lost. But with honestly a lot of graces and the ability to fast travel to them, it wasn't much of an issue of losing runes, it was more an issue of me either forgetting I had a bunch of runes and not going to level, or I simply got a little bit greedy. Now the goal in the game is quite simple. There is something called the Elden Ring. It is in pieces. It was broken before the game started. You have to get the pieces of it and you have to get to the end and become the Elden Lord. That's your plan. It is your whole goal. How to get there though? Well, that's not as simple. You are guided through the game, but at the same time, the game just kind of lets you do your own thing. The story is confusing, like a really confusing, but at the same time, it's not bad. I'm usually someone who is hyper-focused on a good story. A good story can get me through a lot of bad games, while a bad story can often ruin the best of gameplay. But here the story was confusing, but I didn't feel it was bad. I knew I lacked understanding, but it didn't bother me. I knew enough to go on, and I kept on meeting interesting characters who I could at times help, and sometimes my help caused terrible things to happen to them. But I felt like I was meant to be lost, and meant to be confused, at least on my first playthrough. And when I started New Game Plus, the game sort of made more sense, and cinematics and people I met now 
made more sense as I met them, and I started to be able to piece the story together a little bit more. But while the story is confusing, it is the gameplay where this game shines, because honestly, I found it really fun. At the start of the game, you make it harnessed, there is a character creator, it is one of the most frustrating character creators I have ever dealt with, as each slider seems to want to move a bunch of other things along with the thing I am trying to move. And still, you can make a decent person out of it. This will probably spend 90% of the game with their head covered up by some sort of a hat or a helmet. You can then pick a starting class. Now, none of these are set in stone. There is nothing stopping you from starting as a spellcaster, only to pick up a big sword down the road. In fact, you can choose to start with nothing but your underwear and a great big club. The classes are simply a choice of what starting stats you have, along with which gear and abilities you get from the beginning. But any class can become anything in this game. Though I will tell you that difficulty can vary drastically based on what type of combat you prefer. I ended up as a sorcerer and I had a blast, though this is often considered the easy mode of the game. And if you want more challenge, grab yourself a sword and try to master the art of dodging and parrying. I'm terrible at both, so I prefer to stand far away and throw spells at my problems. After starting the game, you have sort of a short intro where you can learn the basics of moving and fighting. And then you end up coming out in the great big world. And the game just says, have at it. And leaves you to figure this out on your own. And... That is genuinely the beauty of this game. It is built on exploration. Coming outside, you meet a guy you can talk to. The talking system is a bit weird. You gotta talk to him repeatedly so he tells you everything he wants to say. But honestly, you're free to go wherever you want. The gameplay loop I most often found myself in was exploring, finding something interesting, be it people, caves, ruins, angry dragons, mysterious statues, paintings, or just pretty places to enjoy. And there I would find challenges, enemies, optional bosses and rewards. Every cave has an end boss and a chest with something. Be it gear or spells or new abilities or something else. Exploration is rewarded and encouraged. I genuinely can get lost for hours in this game just wandering around, finding all the little dungeons, fighting or sneaking my way past enemies and just enjoying the little secret and visual storytelling you can find. Around you are a bunch of little stories happening. Who you help, what you do or do not do will change the lives of these special named characters in the world. Depending on your actions, you will open quest lines and close others, which gives the game a nice replayability if you want to go for other choices and different endings. And while the main beat of the game is the same, there are specific bosses you have to kill, and a final boss you must beat, but the stuff on the way is in many cases entirely optional. The combat itself is pretty responsive, and while the controls felt a little bit funky to me at first, I quickly got used to them, and found them to be quite comfortable by the end. And while the game is definitely recommended to be played with controllers, I had no issue playing it with a mouse and a keyboard, which I usually prefer. The only real issue with the controls I had was that the aiming system was sometimes trying to aim at things that I was not trying to attack at that moment. And my horse genuinely feels like he's walking on ice at times, especially around cliffs. But overall, the fights were amazing. The bosses do a really good job at telegraphing their moves, but they hit insanely hard. And dying is part of the game. You will go in and you will die a lot. But as you die, you observe, you learn, you strategize, and you figure out how to beat the boss. Learning what each tell is and how to counter it. And these fights can be really beautiful. In fact, the game is overall surprisingly pretty. The art team did a good job crafting unique areas which feel distinct from one another. And the world is massive, as it's not just above ground but below it as well. And the visual difference in the areas is lovely, making each one quite distinct looking and beautiful in their own way. The music team added onto the atmosphere with great audio, both in music but also sound cues, as you will learn to deal with many things based on the sounds, 
which includes specific sounds for when enemies die or when their armor shatters. And some of the ambient audio is just eerie, adding to the darkness of the world. And you don't have to play it alone. You can summon friends to play the game with you and have them help you with bosses. Though, make note if you do that, it also opens you up for being invaded by other players. Outside of that, you cannot be invaded by other players, and you can turn the online thing on or off. I had it off for my streams, but I have it on when I'm playing alone. And honestly, I recommend having the online on because I think it's a really fun way to play the game. Because if you play it online, you can see the specters of other players who have gone through these areas. There are bloodstains around which you can use to see how they died. And there are messages from them everywhere. And they are surprisingly nice and often quite funny. I learned that all turtles are apparently dogs. People try to give hints about how to take on a foe, warn about incoming ambushes, all of it while using limited word system the game offers. While I had been playing the game offline for my first playthrough, on New Game Plus I had the online system active, and it feels like I'm not alone. I can see how others are taking on the same challenges, struggling with the same things, and yes, while there are some messages that can lie to you, I have not really seen that many of them. I would say the majority of messages I've seen have all been really helpful or just messages focused on cheering you on or celebrating their victory. So, was it worth playing? For me, it's a big yes. I love this game. It opened up a whole new genre of games I never thought I would enjoy. So, if you want to try a Soulsborne type game, so if you want to try a Soulsborne game, See what they're like. Elden Ring is perfect to start. And I think you might be pleasantly surprised with it. So I would really recommend this game to anyone who wants to try, well, something different. But tell me, is the game worth playing for you? Have you played the game already? Was this your first Soulsborne game or have you played the other ones before? And honestly, what games are you playing right now? Let's talk about it in the comments. And while you're down there, do the good YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, all of that. It really helps with the algorithm, which is sometimes quite lazy in sharing my videos. But whatever you end up doing, I hope you have a lovely day.